Hey YouTube, it's your girl Mars, and I'm back with uh, another video. Now, um, this is my labor and delivery vlog, but before we get into the actual labor and delivery vlog part, I wanted to say that things happen super fast. So, I'm going to let y'all see what the day consisted of and what led up to my son being born so after it's gonna be i didn't want it to be all over the place so i just want to let you guys know that first so i'm gonna let y'all see exactly how the day went how i recorded it and why it stopped the way it did because everything went super fast after that and i'll come back and explain the parts that you don't see okay so enjoy um what you guys do see so far hey you guys so guess what today is? Today is induction day. Your girl is 41 weeks to be exact and I'm having my son either today or tomorrow. Now I'm getting induced at five, it's five o'clock. It's around four, it's four something right now. Um, this is what my belly is looking like. I'm sorry for the lighting, it'll get better, but yeah, I just wanted to start the intro because I know once I get to the hospital, things are gonna move pretty quick. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm not like jumping for joy, but I promise I'm excited. I just, I waited too long. I waited way too long for this, 41 weeks, y'all. I didn't even think I would make it this far, but I had a feeling once I stopped working, that things were going to slow down and that's what happened but it's okay because i get to meet my baby boy in a few hours so i will just keep you guys updated throughout this labor and delivery vlog and yeah i'm getting hot now maybe i am getting a little nervous a little i'm excited because your girl just got hot out of nowhere but yes mom's gonna meet her baby boy real soon Excuse my room. I'm in the process of moving right now. Yes, that on top of that, I'm moving with a whole newborn. Yeah, I know, but it's all great blessings. God is still opening doors during this pandemic right now. He's still opening doors for your girl, so I will keep you guys updated. Filming too. Okay, y'all. So I'm in the um, delivery room. I got my mom back here. I'm about to take the COVID test and I really, really don't want to. But we can look at the view. I know they do it fast though. When they do it, I'll give y'all a quick room tour before she come back because we're not really supposed to be recording. So I'll make it clear. So when you come in, this is what you see. By the way, this is a new birthday center, y'all. Like brand new. This was just, hasn't even been, um, open a year I was charging my phone this is like everything this is uh the bathroom god I gotta take the freaking COVID test oh my god the bathroom is gorgeous in here this is part of my room as well if I'm on to step away there's a closet it's really nice in here though. This is everything. And this is where my baby boy is gonna be. But I'll get back to y'all when I have an actual update for y'all. Hey guys, so it's been a while, a couple hours since I last updated y'all, but I got the IV, and I got the, my service checked, and I did the COVID testing, which honestly wasn't that bad, if so I might be the only one to say that, but it wasn't that bad, if you relax, 
Um, apparently, I've been having contractions and not realizing for a while. I just thought it was pressure, but I have been dealing with contractions and didn't notice. I'm about to eat soon, and then they're going to induce me later, shortly after that. But yeah, I think we're going to be in here for a good minute. Um, that's the screen right now. The construction screen. I don't know if I can see that. I mean, I'm going to flip the camera. I'm going to flip the camera. Okay, so. I have been dealing with contractions. And just never realized that that's what they were. Because they weren't painful like that. Honestly. And my cervix is opened up, but I'm not sure how dilated I am. So yeah, not much is happening. They're just gonna continue um, monitoring me. I'm gonna eat soon before the induction start because I won't be able to eat after that. So yeah, I feel good though. The IV kind of hurt just a little bit. That cervix check definitely hurt. It wasn't excruciating though. So I'll see y'all in the next update. Okay, you guys. So I didn't come back with the update because this is when things just went from zero to 100. So where did I begin? So after I ate, they induced me at 7 p.m. And, you know, that's when I started um, feeling the contractions more. They were doing more service checks. That was literally the worst part of this laboring delivery for me was the freaking service checks. I'm talking about I know I can take it. I want to kick the people. They were nurses and stuff were so nice, but I hated it. I didn't like it. I just ugh, felt so violated. It just sucked. So every time they checked me, um, when they first checked me, they were like, uh, let me see. They were like, I was about half a centimeter dilated. That's what they thought. And then every time they checked me, they were like, oh, well, you're more um, dilated than we thought. So they say, right. But he was still pretty far back. And my contractions, I kept having them back to back, back to back. They were stronger. Um, I didn't get no epidural yet because it wasn't unbearable. I was just breathing through them, you know. I was feeling them in my pelvis, in my stomach, in my back. But, you know, I, I was good. I didn't need no epidural. But every time you looked at the monitor, like, whenever I stood up or sat up, my son heart rate would drop every time. I'm talking about drop to the point... I guess that made the nurse want to run in there every time. Like, it's to the point where if I had to use the bathroom, I started to let them know that, hey, I'm about to stand up and go to the bathroom if his heart rate drops. Because he couldn't, he didn't like it. He just wanted me to stay on my side. So, the monitor was not catching my contractions like they were supposed to. They were actually way stronger than they thought and continuous. So, they gave me some medicine. I think it's called Cifil, 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 I forgot what it's called. They gave me some medicine to stop my contractions or to slow them down because he couldn't take them. They were starting to stress him out. And then it came to the point where they did this other type of, um, it was a service check, but it was to check his my contractions a different way and to con and to check his heart rate a different way. And when they checked it at that point, that's when they realized your girl had to get an emergency C-section. And um, when they said that, I was three centimeters dilated. I still didn't get no epidural, no pain. I think I had pain medicine. I think they automatically give you that. But I didn't have no epidural. So at this point, I wanted to get a C-section. Not because of a uh, my son, but Avery, by the way, if y'all don't know his name. His name is Avery, but um, it not it, I wanted to get the 
C-section because I was tired of them checking my cervix. That's the worst part to me. I'm like, yo, I don't want to do this. Like, yo, just give me a C-section. Like, 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 stop checking me. Because the, the contractions weren't bothering me, y'all. It was the cervix checks. So when she said that, um, I immediately just tuned everybody out. I immediately, um, uh, what's the word? Like, uh, I just like tuned everybody out and relaxed myself. I took my phone out when they, when they said C-section, two seconds later, my mom's getting dressed to go in the room. I'm talking about, she said, oh, you're going to get a C-section and it happened right then and there. Like she didn't say in 30 minutes. It was, no, we are prepping you right now for the C-section. So when they said that, I just tuned out. I started breathing, just focusing on my breathing. I didn't freak out when she said I was getting a C-section. I didn't start to overthink. I prayed. I told my mom to call my grandmother. And yeah, I played some gospel music um, just to keep me calm. With it, at that point, what they were doing to prep me for the C-section, I wasn't... I was out. I was not looking. I did not think about it. I didn't look at no lights. I didn't watch them do anything. Um, they rolled me to the room. I When they rolled me back there, I didn't open my eyes. I just kept calm, like super calm on some monk type stuff, like t to the point where I just was like, that was it. I'm like, okay. So we get back there. They gave me the spinal tap. Because I didn't have an epidural, I didn't have to go all the way out. And um, they gave me the spinal tap, I think this is called. But it's basically like the epidural. But if you ask me, I think that's way stronger than the epidural. Because, boy, oh, I couldn't feel nothing. But um, they gave it to me. And once again, it's bright lights. But I decided to close my eyes because... I didn't want to look up, like look up. I didn't want to look up at the table, laying on the table, and look up and see a whole bunch of lights. I did. That's not calming to me. I just kept my eyes closed, kept praying, kept breathing, and the doctor's like, "Ma'am, you know, are you okay? You breathing and kind of hard. And when people do that, it's because they're getting nauseous." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm fine. I'm trying to relax right now." He said, "Oh." He said, "Wow, you're breathing to just to." Come. I said, "Yes," because uh. In my head, I'm like, yo, y'all about to, y'all pulling the baby out of me. This is during the procedure. Like, literally during the procedure, they're pulling him out of me. <laughs> um, Y'all, I felt absolutely nothing. He even said that I would feel the pressure. I felt nothing at all. I honestly didn't realize they were, that they pulled him out until I heard his little cries at first. I had no clue they didn't even pull him out. You know, my mom was right there with me. You know, my mom was my everything, of course. And, yeah, it that's just, like, it went that fast. It went from three, three centimeters dilated to, bam, you can't contract. I mean, you can't in a C-section because my son cannot handle my contractions. Because the monitor wasn't picking them up like they were supposed to. And I end up having them back-to-back -back constantly. Like, I was having them constantly back-to-back -back as as early as three centimeters. He wouldn't have made it at 10 centimeters. He wouldn't be able to handle that. So, yeah, the C-section after that, um, I saw him. I was crying. I was thanking God because everything went so smoothly. I didn't bleed terribly. Um, uh, it, it just, it was amazing. I mean, oh, my God. Like, I was like, it just hit me so hard at that point when I heard his cries. They didn't put him on my chest right away because... I think something was wrong with his breathing for the moment or something like that. I got to kind of ask my mom because after that, once I saw him and my mom was holding him and stuff like that, and they were stitching me back up and stuff, I knocked out. I After that, I was gone for hours. I mean, I heard everything, but it was, it was over. I, he came at 4.37 a.m. and um on may 20th so it i wasn't even in labor that long how long is that what let me see five seven eight nine ten eleven twelve one two three four dang i was only in labor for t 10 hours so yeah you guys so my son is here um he's with his mom right i mean his mom his nuna right now <laughs> he's with my mom right now and i will have um a whole induction, I mean, 
introducing my son uh, video. I'll have a separate video for that. I just wanted to give you guys the rundown on my labor and delivery, um, how I'm healing and all of that. I'll do a separate video on that as well because I don't want to make this one too long. So if you guys want to know how I'm healing and how I feel right now, let me know because it's currently May 27th and he was born May 20th. So it, it's I'm only one. He's one week today. <laughs> That's it. So, I will see you guys in the next video. Deuces.